And a tool that we've been using at Fordham for the last couple of years, which has proven enormously successful, is a perusal. And perusal is a social annotation tool. It comes out of Harvard University. Um, you may know Eric Mazur, who was the lead developer of this particular application. It is made available free to our institution and can be made available free to your institution as well. Um, it plugs into your learning management system. So if you have Canvas or Blackboard or Moodle or any other system, Perusal plugs into that learning management system. If after this webinar, you go to your IT department and they say, no way I can get that done by September, uh, don't worry. You can still create your own perusal.com account. Once you've done that, you create a class and then you invite your students uh, that are taking your course, for example, in the fall to join that. So you can do it purely on the perusal.com environment. Um, and Perusal is, as I said earlier, a social annotation tool. By that, I mean that class readings that you would have assigned anyway suddenly exist in one digital form. And all of your students annotate that common text and not only comment their own thoughts and ideas about the, the writer and uh, as, as Dana had mentioned, the thesis that is being presented there, but also they comment on each other's comments. They ask questions about meaning and understanding. They answer each other's questions and hopefully they engage in a back and forth and, and even respectfully disagree if that's, if that's the case as well. So it's a fantastic tool. Essentially, it deals with your class readings. And Perusal is actually uh, particularly well situated to address a number of the COVID-19 challenges that we are all thinking about it and, and I think, you know, had been mentioned, Adam had mentioned earlier on, which is, you know, if we are going to teach and we want to have an asynchronous tool like Perusal, how do we find and, and employ this so that it is both thoughtful and rigorous in the classroom? How do we help our students understand and gain skills in close reading of material that we present to them, primary and secondary, of course? And the third item here I think is super important, which is how do we promote uh, an intellectually supportive community? And when you think about the atomized world that we're about to, to face in the fall and, and perhaps in the spring and beyond, how do we bring together a student that may be in a different time zone, one that's living in a dorm room, a commuter student, um, person who uh, is just unable to get to campuses. How do we bring these students together and create a community? And, and I think Perusal does a great job of that. And lastly, how do we make sure that when we are going to have synchronous aspects to our class, so uh, a webinar or a physical in-person class or some kind of combination of the two, how do we make sure that those um, those sessions are as rich and as fulfilling as possible. And ultimately what we're trying to do is make sure that those classes don't begin with the dreaded, you know, any questions about the reading. Because with perusal, you are able to actually know what the questions are before you enter that synchronous um, aspect of your, of your course. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to leave the uh, slideshow such as it is right now and go to perusal to show you what it actually looks like. So I have logged into our Blackboard system here at Fordham, but as I said, you could log into Canvas or Moodle or any other learning management system or just go directly to it. And this is the instructor view of this tool. You'll notice there's a getting started uh, section here that I would recommend you take a look at the welcome message that they have for your students that explains the why are students using Perusal. There's a library where you upload your course readings, the class readings that you would like your students to engage with. There's an assignments tab and a students tab. Note under students, you are able to group your students into smaller groups if you have a particularly large class. I noted Dana had been mentioning that her class uh, could go up to 60 students. That would be 
a little bit crazy, I think, to have 60 students doing five annotations in a given um, article. So what I would likely do is break, I would break it down into three groups of 20, for example, and that's trivial to do. In order to upload uh, content into the perusal library, you simply come over here to the right hand side to this green add button. And you can, uh, nine times out of 10, people are adding documents from their computer. So these are readings that you already have a copy of and you would like your students to uh, experience. They can be Word documents, they can be PDFs, they can be EPUBs. Um, also note down here, Perusal can now allow your students to annotate video. So they can annotate various uh, parts of video. Uh, you can bring things from Dropbox. You can also annotate, have your students annotate web pages. So if there's an online journal or a contemporary news article that you would like your students to annotate, Perusal will take that website, uh, bring it down in an HTML5 format. It sort of ossifies it at that point and your students can annotate it. I should also mention that if you, when you are bringing PDFs, for example, onto your um, Perusal site. Perusal is extremely accessible. And what it does is it OCRs the PDFs that you bring to it and has a built-in screen reader so that students with visual impairments can have the not only the text itself read aloud, but they can also have the the commentary, the comments, the questions, and the answers that their peers um, write, also those can be read aloud. So there's a wonderful built-in OCR functionality as well as a built-in screen reader that goes on uh, within Perusal. So you can see I have a number of um, articles here. I also have images. Um, Perusal is fantastic because you can also assign images for students to annotate. Uh, just a few minutes ago, we were talking about facsimiles and beautiful pages, etc. Students can annotate those. So how do you go about then taking something which is in the library and creating an assignment? Well, you simply choose that particular text and click here where it says assign. Um, you are able within Perusal to assign certain pages. So this is a particularly short one. I would likely do the entire thing. But if you were assigning a long uh, article which stretched for a number of pages, you could create one from page one to 47 and then another one from 48 to 103, for example. Once you've set that up, the range, you of course submit uh, a deadline or create a deadline. I recommend that you, you create a deadline about approximately 24 hours before your next synchronous class. So you have some time to go over what they have done and uh, what they've been thinking about. The assignment name is self-evident. The instructions for students is extremely important. The research that has been done on perusal, on student engagement with perusal has indicated that pre-reading prompts here within the instructions for students section are extremely important and much preferred over the instructor annotating directly in the text. What they have found through uh, research is that when instructors annotate the text themselves and pose questions or respond to questions directly in the text, the student engagement with the text is actually diminished. And that I think that makes sense if we all conjure up kind of pre-March uh, experience in the classroom. If you've ever broken your class up into small groups and asked them to discuss a certain uh, issue or idea, and at a certain point you leave the podium and you decide that you're going to go filter around and sort of see what they're doing, Undoubtedly, you've had the experience of when you get physically present or close to one of those groups, the students pivot to you and suddenly, rather than conversing amongst themselves, start asking you questions, talking to you, and trying to kind of engage in that way. So we highly recommend thoughtful, intra, um, thoughtful uh, questions, here's prompts, super important. And the last section or 
part of creating an assignment is to decide how many annotations you would like the students to do. Most instructors I work with uh, ask their students to do anywhere between five and eight annotations per reading. Of course, that depends on complexity and length. And you can, of course, decide when that uh, particular assignment will be visible to your students. They can be anonymous. They can be optional. That's completely up to you. Um, I am now going to actually uh, go to one uh, of the readings here, which is a, an illuminated manuscript that Laura was, was uh, very helpful in, in forwarding to me. And if I click on open, you'll note that I am able to annotate this in two different ways. Either I can click and put a dot at a certain location on an image, and I can enter a, a comment here. You know, here is my comment, blah, blah, blah. Press return and that is entered. Or I could, for example, draw a rectangle around a particular aspect of that uh, image that I would like to comment on. And I can do this. But it, of course, is trivial to do this with text as well. Let me just uh, choose this one. And when I open it, I can go to a certain section of text, highlight what I'm interested in annotating, just do this, and and I would annotate and press return. And that is essentially the process that your students will do. Notice up here, because I am an instructor, I can see either my own comments, I could look at group A or group B or group C's annotations, I could hone in on a particular student and what she or he has annotated, I could look at only the questions, uh, only my comments, no comments at all, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a number of different ways that you can view it. And in fact, I recommend speaking to students about um, the possibility of reading initially anyway with no comments. I, I don't know about you, but I actually don't want to read with other people's annotations in the text the first time through. I like to read a clean copy so that I wrestle with the author, I wrestle with the thesis and the meaning and the text. Then once I have gone through that and I've sort of roughly formula formulated some questions or some comments I'd like to make, then I might be curious to see what others have written uh, in that. Now I'm going to actually leave this, uh, this demonstration, this uh, fake class that I created here and show you a class that occurred in the spring so I can show you what student annotations look like from uh, your instructor's perspective. So this was a class that was uh, taught in our theology department here at Fordham University. And in this reading, you see the uh, pre-reading prompts here at the very beginning of the reading that the instructor has given his students. You'll notice the pie graph down at the bottom that gives you an overview of how uh, engaged the students were with that particular text. The, uh, the program perusal will tell you how many comments in total, how many questions and unanswered questions. And this is particularly interesting. It will give you a sense of how much time the students spent on any given reading that you have assigned. You also get to see this uh, uh, section called upvoting. So like many social media uh, platforms, Perusal allows students to like other students' comments if they're enthralled or, or intrigued by that. That is known as upvoting within Perusal, and you get to see a short list of the most upvoted annotations uh, that have been uh, uh, noted by the peers. You get also get a listing to show you the most active students in the class and, of course, what comments they have made. You could break it down by looking at all comments, but to be honest with you, very few faculty have the time to look at all the comments of students. And, you know, I think if you just do the math, if you have 20 students, they're doing five annotations, it's just too much.
So instead, you can look at a confusion report that will show you the areas within the text where there was the most intense discussion. And you can look at an analytics panel, and again, this is available just to you, where you can see how your students have been scored by perusal. It's important to note that perusal has an artificial intelligence engine that automatically grades your students on a simplistic one to three scale. And you can uh, either accept that grading, uh, not accept it at all, or use it as a rough guide. I also highly recommend you think about the page view report. This will show you how many page views of each page your students are doing, how much time they're spending on a given page. If I had assigned this reading, for example, I might look at page 10 again and see if there's some concept which might be a bit of a stumbling block for them. And just to show you before I uh, have to leave it for um, other presenters and the questions, if I take a look at all of the conversation. I can jump to a certain annotation and see what's going on here. Student annotations are, of course, in yellow there. I can go down and take a look at other pages within the text. This one was done by the instructor. This one was done by a student. If I click on it, I see what is being done over here. Students uh, can annotate anonymously if they wish to do so. Uh, you can also tweak the grading uh, setup if you wish. That's perfectly allowable. And it's a fantastic and rich tool. I highly recommend it. 95% of you are assigning course readings anyway. This really builds community and is just, is just a wonderful tool.